It's the After jail. the Show show, which is the name of the Fox show, but this is our show. Show. So over the weekend, I was in Mason City, Iowa. You and I haven't had a chance to really talk about this. Uh huh. Yes, we Christian have. We school. talked on the phone. Yeah, not the same as being uh, this little after show segment, but here's the deal. Okay. Four City Christian School went to Mason City, Iowa. Maybe the second time I've been to Iowa, you and I went the first time. Friday night high school football contest, our first winner, mm-hmm. Britt. Back in the day. Yeah. And I, so I talked to Melinda just yesterday on the phone. Melinda was there. She came. Our she very first me. winner. She was there. She and said you you were you were C plus. Oh, she didn't. No, know. she said it was great. It was fantastic. Here's the thing. It was a overflow crowd. Everybody, the folks in Iowa, amazing. But people from Brit were there. But people from your hometown, Elmore, um, Minnesota, Minnesota, mm-hmm. and uh, good. Who do you remember? Who? Yeah, the guy tried to tell me. I had so many people, and it was hard to keep all the names straight. Uh, well, that would have been one worth writing down. There are only like five hundred people that. Not live just in town. Elmore. What's the other town that you say? Because both of them. Uh, two different people came up and said, oh, I'm from no, Blue, said, Earth. Blue, oh, Earth, Blue Earth. Blue Earth, yeah. Okay. And I mentioned Blue Earth from the stage and brought you on a banner. But here's the deal. On we the used way to there, drive from Elmore. It's about 10 miles away. And we would drive. One time we rode our bikes to Blue Earth. See, I couldn't remember which it was. And two people, some pe- somebody came from El- Elmore and they said, hey, tell me more about where Ron was from. Right. I'm from Elmore. Somebody else said Blue Earth. Mm-hmm. So, but the thing is, on the way there... Uh, the guy said, um, James said, you want to stop and get some pop? Boy, yeah. there you are in different parts of the country. When some people say soda in the South, they say, uh, let's go get a Coke, no matter what it is. You know, if it's if, if it's uh, Dr. Pepper or cherry drink or orange, whatever you say, let's go get a Coke. But in that part of the country, that was that stood out. Let's, let's stop and get a pop, get I, some pop. I've been in the South long enough that it does sound odd when I go back home, but uh, my family, you know, do you want a pop to drink? Yeah. yeah. That just sounds normal. And then when I came to the South, uh, I said, I was in line for, at you know, some burger place and they said, do you want a Coke with that? I said, what else do you have? She kind of looked at me and she said, uh, m- orange juice. I said, no, uh, what kind of pop do you have? And, <laughs> and she was like, it looked at me like, oh, you're, you're not, not from, from here. around here. Are we you? have Coke or Dr. Pepper or root beer. You know, whatever. What kind of Coke do you want? Yeah. So wait a minute, because Coke comes in like two flavors, or at least it did back then. Now you got a whole bunch of things, but you had Coke and Diet Coke, and that was it. Those are the only kind of Cokes. Pepsi's not a Coke. Pepsi's a Pepsi. Dr. Pepper's <laughs> a Dr. Pepper. You know, and it was very frustrating. Good luck. Good luck transplant. trying to but now, re-educate now, the no, South. Yeah. No. No. I've been assimilated. Yeah. Now I go up north and I go, hey, what kind of Coke you want? So that was one of the first things I noticed, a little bit of language difference. And then I started to see all these little sheds, these huts out on the lake where people were ice fishing. <laughs> huts. I got to tell you. Huts. You make them sound like natives. A guy a guy from uh, <laughs> uh, somebody who grew up in Kentucky that's lived in Mississippi for 20 plus years. I've never been you, out on a lake where they were ice fishing. They're called ice up. houses. Yeah, ice yeah. houses. So, and you've uh, never been on an ice house? Never, no. And so that I got out on the lake. And was I, it nice? Was it a nice one? Well, there were cars out there, and they said ordinarily it would be an entire city. And I remember when I was in Devil's Lake, uh, North Dakota, they talked about how they would put road signs, little makeshift road signs, out on the ice sure, so sure. you could find what part of the lake that you needed to be. All right, I'll tell you a quick Pretty little crazy. story. Uh, we get my wife's uh, Pathfinder back when we were first married, and uh, we're driving in Minnesota, and I said, let's just drive out on the lake. And she said, oh, I don't know about this. Tennessee girl. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sure. So we're driving out. We got Tennessee a car girl full of Tennessee girl with common sense. Uh, no, no, no. No. It's, I mean, it's, it's the, it was like December, late December. So the, the ice is more than thick enough. Two feet thick. And yeah. who knows? I don't know. But anyway, we're driving around having a blast. Okay. My cousin's in there, and he's got... Uh, his son in there, and we're driving around. Joni's very uh, on edge. And then I said, let's bust through that snow drift, snow drift, Tim. That'll be fun. Well, it was very hard. It looks soft. So when we ramped that thing, and we got airborne, went burn, Dukes of Hazard style, sure. over and then hit the ice. Ka-koosh! Thankfully, we did not go in. and uh, But we thought, you know what? Enough of this. Uh, we've uh, tested the Lord. 
Yeah. And so, and survived. So let's go back. And we're driving back. And then all of a sudden we noticed or later in the day, uh, our tracks are filling up with water. That was a very, oh, very. Wow. Uh, are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. But not bad. Just, I think, you know, just some of the top layer of snow was melting a little bit, but still uh, that was enough for Joni. She said, we're Wake never, call. we're never doing that again. Never. Yeah. But you know, we might. Well, hey, great people in Iowa. Love that part of the country. I'm glad I got there when I did because two weeks earlier, it had been 40 below the wind chill. And so January in Iowa on the Minnesota border, you're really taking your chance weather-wise. The regular temperature was 40 or the wind chill? Wind chill. Wind chill. Oh, that's chill. not bad. Yeah. Yeah, you could have done that. You could have been right on out there taking a big breath once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, uh, we had this uh, tip today. And I wanted to talk about this earlier on the show. We were talking about uh, the... Uh, how to what, cure what, how insomnia. To cure, yeah, thank get you. Get more sleep. I need more sleep. I could remember the word. But that, uh, was, their, that, was, all, that was their great advice. And I'm sure it was Wait, get more sleep study. is how you cure insomnia. How you get, cure that, insomnia, they said on this report, was to get more sleep. Kind of like how to get in shape, exercise. Yeah, exercise more. How to get ahead financially, Spend less than you make. Wow, that's some brilliant stuff. Yeah. And who, who really knows did, how much tax Do you have the details on that? I do not have that. Uh, I'd like to know what study that was because it's ridiculous. I want to know how much it cost us. Probably the same people that designed the Obamacare website are in charge of gathering up all the money and doing the research and wasting our money to come up with this. Captain Obvious was on the panel. You know what? That, I, I th- that part's for sure. I think maybe, though, as I think about it, maybe that's not such a dumb bit of advice after all, though. Because a lot of times, the things that we need to hear are some of the most obvious. Oh. You're, you're, you know? You're, you're dangerously I'm, close to quoting C.S. Lewis. Who said what? He said, we need to be reminded more often than we need to be taught. Booyah. <laughs> He didn't say that. I added that. <laughs> <laughs> Booyah. All right. That's it. This has been our fun little after the show podcast. Are we going to do this more often? Travis, Travis, let's lean into the producer, Travis, and see what he says. Yeah. Because Travis uh, is the brainstorm behind this. I want to know, are we going to do this thing more often? Sure. Okay. We'll do All that. Right. Ra- we'll every we'll day? Are we doing this as, as often as we possibly can? We'll, we'll, let, we'll let, the, uh, let the people decide. Yes. So far, it sounds we like a lot of people. rambling. That's what I think. Five minutes uh, of rambling. There's a reason that. For that could be the name of the show. Five minutes of rambling. Five minutes of just random stuff we didn't get out. We got our name. No, I think rambling. I think that'd be, we need to keep it honest. Sounds like a country song. Five minutes of rambling. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs>